Okay, folks, for this screencast, we're going to do Newton Raphson, uh, but we're going to do multiple multiple roots. Um, so I'm going to breeze through the part where we uh, we just code the actual Newton Raphson technique. And I, I'm going to use um, the secant method just because I want to make sure that we generalize this to any function. So, first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let's make a function. So, I'm going to say y equals. Uh, See x minus 10 dot times x plus 10 dot times. Let's say x minus 20. Okay, so this has three roots. Three roots at 10 minus 10 and 20. Um, so I'm gonna uh, plot the function. And a lot of times you can't do this, but because this is a pretty simple exercise, we're going to. Um, so I'm gonna say uh, x plot is let's say one space. I'm gonna go minus 30 to 30 and just say like a thousand points. And then y plot is uh, just f of x plot. This, and then I should just be able to do it. Let me do it, throw a uh, clear CLC, close all, and then uh, throw in a plot, x plot, comma, y plot, and then hit F5. And there we go. So there's there's our function there, and you you can clearly see the. Uh, probably don't need to go that far out. Let me go just to minus what, 15. That way it's a little bit. Okay, it's easier to see. There you go. See, I mean, there's clearly one root there, one root there, one root there. Now, if you're doing the brute force technique, um, it's really easy to plot it, and you can just take out the roots there. But uh, if you have some like transcendental functions, obviously it's going to be a lot harder to do that. Um, so, all right. So let's 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 program the newton raphson technique. So this is the difference. So in order to do multiple roots, you actually need a function called solution equals. Um, I'm just going to call it nr newton raphson and I need an x initial. Yes, and so what this function is going to do is it's actually going to return the, the solution that spits out from the Newton Raphson. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my x initial. I'm just going to make it 15. I have no idea what it is. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to say solution is Newton Raphson of x initial. Okay, I'm going to leave off the semicolon to see if it actually computes what I want. So if we look at the figure, uh, hey, there we go. If we look at the figure, if I start at 15, it's kind of a toss-up about which way. So I would recommend watching my other newton raphson video to make sure you understand how newton raphson works. But anyway, it's kind of a toss-up. If I start at 15, it's either going to go to the left and give me 10, or it's going to go to the right and give me 20. Um, so anyway, so let's just see. So let's say, uh, let's say iters equals 1. So let's have an iter max. So let's say while iters is less than, let's say like 1,000. And and I forget how MATLAB works. Right? And this is octave, but it's pretty much the same. But I think you have to do it like this. And let's say error is it is, that a, is error a function? No, okay, good. And error is uh, is greater than um, I don't know one e minus four. All right, there's my, there, there's my tolerance. Okay, so uh, in in this loop, I'm gonna say iters equals iters plus one. So I have a that's basically like one thousand is like my iter max, and then I need to initialize error. So error is gonna be uh, f of x initial. Now it's going to be absolute value. That's the value of x initial. Okay. All right. Then we just kick off the newton raphson technique. So basically, we have. All right. So then what we need to do is we need to kick off our x initial like this. I'm going to call it uh, x iter. And then we're going to need uh, x iter. Basically, the entire newton raphson algorithm is x iter equals x iter minus f of x iter divided by f prime. Now, if f prime goes undefined, we're kind of you know SOL. Um, but for now, we're just gonna it'll, it'll just we'll, we'll figure something out. Okay. So for f prime, we're gonna use the secant method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say y prime is uh, f of x plus dx minus f of x minus dx, and then this whole thing divided by. Two times two times dx, and dx is um, say 0.01, and then this is a central central difference thing. Okay. Oh. Now what I want it to do, what I want it to do is I, I want it to just spit out the value, and uh, let's see. Looks like it just went to minus 10. Is that right? So I think what might be cool instead of doing this is, is plotting every iteration. So if I just do, let's go back up to this plot and throw a hold on. And then 
I'm going to throw a, uh, a plot x iter f of x iter. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to recompute the error. So error equals absolute value of x, x iter. There we go. All right, so this should be just the standard newton raphson algorithm. Okay, so uh, I, it's crazy, but so if you look here at 15, if you draw the tangent line out to here, I think it hits negative 10 like perfectly. So I think it hits in like one iteration. Um, so there's a couple things I forgot to do. First, solution is the x iter like this so that it spits it back out because right here it's saying solution is empty. Um, and then the other thing that I want to do is when I plot, I want to plot a red x. Okay, like that. There we go. Yeah, so it's like maybe it does like two iterations and it hits right there. But other than that, I mean, it basically just hits negative 10. Okay, so now you can see the power of this code, right? If I plug in, say, um, 8, right, and run that, um, let's see, 8 goes straight to 10. So my solution is 10. If I try an initial guess of negative 4, right, that here's negative four. Negative four is weird. It looks like it pops like way out here, but it ends up converging to minus 10. Anyway, so if you know how to use this code, it's probably because you either know how to use it in Rapson or it's because you watched my video. Either way, however you did it, now it's ready to, it's ready to um, loop it. All right, so anyway, so you, you have to loop it, right? So basically, now that we have this code that does newton raphson for x initial, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to say x initial is lin space and I'm just going to go from minus 20, let's say minus 50 to 50. I'm going to try to, I'm going to do 100 times, right? So then I'm going to say for um, x equals, oh, sorry, I need to make, this, this is not x initial anymore. This is x guesses. And I need to say for x initial equals x guesses. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and display and say um, starting with initial guess equals, and then I'm going to throw string x initial like that, and throw some brackets on here, and then I'm going to run the newton raphson algorithm, and it's going to spit out what I want, and then that should give me all of my roots here, so if I save and run it, uh-oh, didn't like it, oh, it doesn't, oh, num, it's not string, sorry, I'm thinking of Python, num2 string, whoops, uh, Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, hang on. Did I spell this wrong? R A P R A P H. -L. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. I think it's just having a hard time. Yeah, it's just having a hard time plotting everything. So let's let's do this. Let's get rid of this plotting routine in here because um, it's having it's having trouble finding it. And then instead of doing a hundred initial guesses, let's just do ten. And let me pop this out, and put this over here, and put this over here, and then let me run it one more time. Oh. There we go. Man, this is why you pay pay more money for Octave. Okay, so it looks like. So if I do an initial guess of negative 50, I get to negative 10. Negative 38.8 gives me negative 10. Negative 27 gives me negative 10. But if you keep going, 5 gives me 10. 16 gives me 20. And so what you need to do is you need you need to make a, uh, uh, is roots a function? Roots is probably a function. Yeah, roots is a function. So roots nr, I'm going to make an empty bracket. <coughs> Sorry about that. My daughter's a little sick. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say roots nr equals, and I'm going to concatenate roots nr like this with the solution. And then I'm going to get rid of this guy here, and I'm going to hit F5. And so what I should be able to do is at the bottom here type in roots nr. And let me get rid of this plot because I don't need it. Save it. Run that. And then there you go. There, so there are your, there are your solutions there, negative 10, 10, 20. And then at this point, what you can probably do is you can run unique. I think this is a built-in function. And it should just pop out and say, hmm, did, it, did it do it? 
Oh shoot! You know what? There's a there's a tolerance here, so if you run, yeah. Let me let me let me have roots and R be an output like this, and so now roots and R should be in my directory. Oh, uh, okay. Let me do roots and R equals Newton graphs something like that. Why do I have a plot? I I'm not plotting anything. Hang on. No, okay, now I know. It's because I have a hold on here. All right. So, anyway, so let me go back and run this. Wow, I didn't save. Poop. All right. So run that. Okay. So now if I type in roots and R, there we go. So there's an R. And so if I do like roots of an R of one, and then of uh, two. But if I take one minus two, they're going to be slightly different. Yeah, they're like almost the same. So this is an iterative process, and it like converges onto the solution. So if you want to find the unique roots, if you're doing this for a homework project, I would just go through by hand and just grab the unique ones. If you wanted to code in some level of uniqueness, I guess what you could do is you could say, uh, oh, man, I don't want to code this on the fly. Give me one second. I'll come back. Okay, I, I feel like maybe you guys want to see my thought process here. So um, this is all I've coded in. So four IDX is one to length of uh, roots and R. And so what I want to say is I want to say uh, unique roots. I'm going to change this to roots and R to unique roots like this. And I'm going to say I'm going to make this the empty set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, uh, well, I need to grab the first one. So unique roots is maybe not maybe not that one. Let's say roots and R of one. So grab the first one and then start at two. And then what I need to do is I need to basically say like if um, I need to loop through unique roots for IDX equals one to length of unique roots, and then say basically like uh, new new root is one, so it's it's true, it's innocent until proven guilty, and then we basically say, and I need to make this JDX, if um, unique, unique roots of JDX is equal to roots and R of IDX, that means that it's not a new root, so new root is now zero. And then I tab this over. Okay, then after I break out of the loop, I say if new root. So if it's a new root, then say unique roots equals unique roots. I have to concatenate it. Ah, put the wrong bracket. If this works on the first try, I'm going to be impressed. Roots and R IDX. End. Okay. All right, let's try this out. So rather than roots and R, I'm going to say unique roots. Blast. Oh, you can't make them e It's not if they're equal. You have to say if this absolute value of this minus this is less than some tolerance, so E minus 2. Ha! Got it. So there you go. So there, I have my initial guesses, and there are my roots. Minus 10, 10, and 20. Okay? Hopefully this is a good enough explanation. Um, let me just go through this code one more time. So basically, um, here, here I just plot it, so I could probably just comment this out. This isn't really a big deal. Um, here, what I do is I make a vector of guesses. So this is kind of like grid search and Newton Raphson put together, but I make a, I make a vector of, of guesses, and then I loop through and I call the Newton Raphson routine with that initial guess and get a solution, and then I package it up into this big vector roots and R. If you come down. This is the standard Newton Raphson algorithm, x iter equals x iter minus f of x over f prime. Here's my function f of x, which has three roots. And then here is f prime, which I'm using central differencing here. And then after that, I added this little uniqueness routine, which basically is just built off of a tolerance. And there are your unique roots there, minus 10, 10, and 20. All right. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, post in the comments if you have any questions. Oh, uh, okay, this code here, I'm gonna put, I have a repo called like MATLAB projects or something on GitHub. I'm gonna put it into this code called screencast codes. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are asking me where my codes are. If you just go to gitlab.com and look for my, uh, my name, um, I think it's I think it's Cimontalo 251 and you look it up, um, you'll find all of my codes in screencast codes here. I have it, um, you know, organized as best as I can, and so if you put it in here, you can uh, you can grab all the stuff. So probably this is Newton Ravson, so I'll probably put it in the optimization folder, and you should be good to go. Cool, awesome. Have a good day. Bye.